Alright, so it's time to put these spotting tongs back in. This is going to be probably a lot of people are really going to watch this video. This is the important one. The timing of the spotting tongs. Uh, just so you understand, I've put in, I've placed some yellow marks uh, with the, our actual uh, Pro Shop pencil for drilling. Put some marks on these uh, these tooth racks and the actual gear wheel, gear drive wheel on the tongs, so you can understand. Took my tongs apart, uh, cleaned it as best as I can to my satisfaction, and I took out the uh, retaining the retainer for the tongs. Uh, I only lube, the only place I lube the tongs is on this shaft right here that goes in the center of the tong part right here. Uh, that's the only part that I see is critical where there's enough friction where it's required. As you can see on my tooth rack here, I've put some yellow marks. Uh, it's important that you see it is on the second valley. Let me grab a little. I've got on the second valley of each set of racks. Second valley. And those are my timing marks on the gear drive wheel here of your tong. Let's see if I can get you a little better positioning. You'll see there's a, a hole there. You can see the hole at the top of that gear wheel that is drilled. And I've drawn the yellow line straight through the center. It goes all the way down to the bottom. And that is pointing out to your critical tooth for the timing on your tongs. All right. You can also, if you don't have that mark, you can also tell there are little shiny circles put on these teeth. You follow that line straight down to the bottom, there's a circle. I don't know if you can see it in the light or I can tip it, but it's there's multiple circles around there in the pattern, but there's always that one right there that lines up with the center. So that's something else that you could actually go off for a reference point. All right, so I'm going to put this tong back together. Boom. about the shakiness. Go ahead and run this down through. It's a little difficult to do this one hand. I'm going to go ahead and bring you up top here for a second. Alright, so I've got the tong back together. I've got that uh, bracket put in it. I want to give you another piece of information. This is kind of what I go off of. There is, down in the center here, there is a, let me, uh, pause, I'm going to mark it with some yellow, make it easier for you to pick up. Alright, so right down in the center here, it's almost like a, a ball and a glove, like a socket. Uh, whenever you crank the tongs to their fullest open, see how it disappears? I'm going to close these up, get this out of my way. So it disappears as they open up, you see that ball come around there, that yellow part, and then it ends up bottoming out into that socket right there. That part that bottoms out, the direction it's bottoming out is this way. As you install these tongs, every part that bottoms out, the direction where it goes where it bottoms out, that is going to be towards all of the gear racks up here on the table, this way. So all every tong you use, where it bottoms out, it should be going the direction when it stops. It'll be on that side of these gear racks, pointing to these gear racks. So if I got a different set of tongs, just to show you, this would be, this set of tongs would be like a three, a three pin or a ten pin or your two pin. This other set of tongs I'm going to bring out here and lay beside it. This would be your one pin or your uh, four, five, six. And I'll go ahead and mark it. Let me get this in a little better light. It's right here. Alright. Now as it turns and cranks open and close, see it's going towards the bottom of the screen as it comes to me to bottom out. Bam, it hits. It's on this side. It's going this direction. So I'm going to rotate these a little bit. Okay, so this would be a three pin, then this go this is your one, and then you'd have your two pin over here on the table, basically. So that's how you'd know which tongs go in which section. It's the easiest way I've found. Uh, everybody's got their own way, but that's how I remember to w in uh, at our facility which set of tongs goes where. 
All right, now I'm going to bring you up and show you a little explanation on the table here. All right, <clears throat> so as you can see, there's a yellow mark right here on the table. Uh, you've got a, a actual support welded on here to keep the tooth rack where it's got to go, and then you've got the hole here where your torque screw, your T30, comes through and ties the whole bracket that holds your tongs down. And I've drawn a straight line to line those up. Now I'm going to grab my gear rack that I marked earlier with the yellow, and I'm going to set it into place. Okay, and notice there is a yellow mark on the gear rack on the second valley. That would want to line up with that mark. So it's usually I don't mark my table, but it would I would line it up with the hole and the metal tab that is welded back here. That's how I line everything up. See the yellow mark of the valley? That is your reference point. If I can get it to cooperate here. There we go. So that's how you set your, that's what part of setting this timing on the system. Now you got to make sure before you drop everything in that your ST switch right here is, make sure that this block here is bottomed out. You wouldn't want any space and be up like that. That thing has to be bottomed out into the stop block. Now you're ready to drop your tongs in. I'm going to set you up. Hopefully this will make it easy to see from this point. All right, so I'm going to bring my tongs in. Always start with your 3-pin or your 10-pin. That way it can lock down the gear drive. And I'm going to flip this up, and I'm going to show you. That was the, the drilled hole, and it goes straight down, and there's the circle. There, you can see that circle a little better in the light. There you go. That That's a reference timing point that I use when I'm not use, marking things up with yellow uh, Pro Shop pencils. I'm going to put that tooth directly into the gear that line of that valley that second valley I'm dropping it in just like so rotate it forward a little bit and just lock it into place now I'm going to show you over top here and get an another light you want to make sure that that See, there's a gap. I'm going to stick something in it to show you right where I'm talking about. It's hard to do this all at one time, and I'm sure it's pretty blurry. Let me get you up. There you go. But there's a gap just to the side of that that pe that uh, that part that I marked with the yellow marker. Let's see if I can find a stick in here. I got a Q-tip. Right in there. There's a gap right beside that. Uh, to know that your timing is right, you'd want that slight little gap there. Uh, it's about an eighth of an inch. If it seems a little off, like you put yours in and it seems that there's a quarter of an inch gap there, spread your, spread your arms here just a little bit and see if that gets you right. One thing you would not want is for the basically uh, ball and glove system here in all kinds of darkness. You wouldn't want that ball and glove system to be bottomed out. You do not want it to be sorry it's about the uh, worst vid video footage here me. You don't want that to be a tight gap there. If that thing is all the way to the gear side of the table and bottoming out and pushing that arm that's not good. That's not what you'd want. Alright so that's basically the timing of the table. You'd want to drop each sus subsequent one, I don't know if that's a proper word, sorry about that, you'd want to drop each one after that into the second valley of each one of those. You can see I've marked them. I'm trying to shine my light a little bit on them. And the same thing on your back row of your 10 pins. Just drop it in in that second valley of your tooth rack. Try not to slide the tooth rack around, and that should help you with your timing.